alternative to a potentially deadly chemical found in common paint strippers faces hurdles to reach consumers. We reported last month on the deaths of dozens of people who use methylene chloride. Last month, the EPA indefinitely postponed a ban on that chemical proposed by the Obama administration. Anna Warner spoke to researchers who developed what they call a less harmful product. Anna, good morning. Good morning, Bianca. Researchers say if the industry won't come up with a safer product, they will, while activists push for retailers to take the existing methylene chloride-based products out of their stores to protect consumers. The science is clear that these chemicals are dangerous. Mike so Shade runs dead. the Mind the Store consumer campaign, petitioning retailers to take paint strippers containing the toxic chemical methylene chloride off the shelves. They're literally deadly for workers and consumers. Workers like Wendy Hartley's 21-year-old son, Kevin, found unconscious by an older brother. You know, he said, I'm sorry, Mom. I, I did everything that I could do, and I couldn't save him. <laughs> Hartley, like dozens of others, died in an entirely preventable accident, overcome by methylene chloride fumes in the paint stripper he was using while on the job refinishing a bathtub in April last year. Manufacturers acknowledge the dangers but say there are no good substitutes for methylene chloride paint strippers. Industry lobbyist Faye Grawl. We think it's very unfortunate that anyone has died as a re result of the product, but there is a need for the product. But researchers in Massachusetts say that answer isn't good enough. It's one of the most toxic and dangerous chemicals that anyone is using today. Professor Michael Ellenbecker directs a program at the University of Massachusetts Lowell that works to come up with alternatives to highly toxic chemicals. His team, working with students, came up with an alternative paint stripping chemical. Your version works just as well as methylene chloride just as quickly? Yes, so our substitute costs about the same, a little bit more than methylene chloride. It works and it's safer. Research manager Greg Morose showed us. We've got two red latex top coats. On a test board, painted with several coats and baked at high temperatures to simulate real life conditions, each solvent is applied to a different circle. See, look at that. The methylene chloride based strippers bubble up the paint, making it easy to remove. And the team's new solvent? It worked. It worked. They say they did it by sorting through a database of existing, much less toxic solvents, then came up with a new combination they say works just as well, a project that took them less than a year. We just looked at what was available, put them together in a new way, and came up with a much safer solution. My hopes are that this gets on the shelves of retailers as soon as possible. It's ready to go. That might seem simple, but they're already encountering opposition from at least one major methylene chloride products manufacturer. Company WM Barr argued to the EPA that the university's new solvent could have its own problems of flammability and toxicity, and that Barr's own tests of the combination prove it doesn't work well enough. But they had the wrong ratio, so of course it wouldn't work. So why do you think they did that? Well, there's a lot of inertia to, you know, maintain the continued use of methylene chloride has been used for 70 years in products. That's their message, that's their mantra. So if someone comes along who's outside of the industry like we are and says, no, here's a perfectly good alternative, their immediate response is, can't be true. So, so you're out to prove them wrong. Exactly. That's what we're doing. So what about those claims from the manufacturer? The university researchers told us they're conducting further tests to prove that it is much less hazardous, their combination. And they say that's the point of their research, to come up with alternatives that don't carry the same risks, like death. The industry told us it thinks new warning labels it's proposing can be effective in preventing further deaths from these products. But many of the experts and the researchers that we talked to said that the problem is consumers and workers don't read those labels yeah. or don't yeah. pay attention yeah. to them, or they're used to having it on the shelves. It's all about the tailor. fine print that so many people don't read. Yeah, right. And breaking that habit is hard. It is a product that a lot of people use. Right. So we'll see. Maybe they're good on the shelf. They've got a startup company that's interested in it. We'll okay. see what happens. All right. It's a good news story at the end of the day. Anna, thanks.